All right, this is a flashing corner. This is a very good flashing corner. They cost a couple of bucks. Uh, they're widely available. There's more than one manufacturer of these. Uh, but this is a terrific flashing corner, and we're going to show you how to install it right now. This is a very important part of a pan system. We're going to use a membrane pan. Uh, membrane pans are very easy to use. They fit any rough opening. You don't have to worry about sizing them correctly. You don't need a saw. There's just a whole bunch of reasons to use a membrane pan. Okay, Percy, let's put this in. Now notice we're not using a hammer tacker. Now ask yourself, why wouldn't we be using a hammer tacker right here? And the answer is, Percy is able to precisely position those staples. When you use a staple gun, the positioning of your staples is extremely precise. And we like that. Now you can imagine a guy who's done this a bunch can do this very quickly. We're slowing it down so you folks can learn from this. If I let Percy and Epi go, they'd have been done with this window about three hours ago. But because we're running video, this is taking a lot longer than I really want it to. And anyway, not to cry like a little girl, but there we have it. Okay, so our flashing corners are in. The bib is on. And now comes the magic of the pan. We've cut this for to flash the dimension of the rough opening plus 12. And that's so that we can go six inches up each side. And you're gonna see Epi take his knife, cut it straight out. We're gonna fold it away and down. And this is the basics of our pan system. Now, I'm not gonna tell you this is the only way to create a pan system, because it's not the only way to create a pan system, but I tell you what, it's a very effective pan very effective pan system to manage water outside of the building. This material can be pulled out later and a subsequent layer of WRB, whether it's another layer of Tyvek or whether it's grade D building paper or whether it's felt, it doesn't really matter. Something can be put uh, around the perimeter of this window and underneath the window correctly for your next layer of building uh, paper or next layer of WRB. This is how we think it should be done. It's not the only method, but we believe this is the best method. All right, I know a lot of you guys out there are even more paranoid than I am about water. And you're going to say, he's not using a sloped sill so that water can run out of the rough opening. I can hear you saying it now because I've said that before in my past. The problem is getting builders to use it. I can put a slope in this sill. And in fact, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. I don't think it's absolutely required. I'm on board with the fact it makes sense. I'm on board with the fact it's a, probably a better assembly. But we have a hard enough time getting builders to pop for a couple of bucks to do this. You start throwing in slope framing sills and their eyes go haywire. But if you have to have a slope sill, here's a great way of doing that. Now I want you to go get some 7-Eleven door trim or some streamlined door trim that is a couple of inches by half an inch high, all right? You all know what I'm talking about. Door trim. You're going to cut the door trim to the dimension of this opening. You're now going to lay it in place. It's going to come up to about half an inch here, right? And then we're going to lay some more bitch of vein on top of that, or should I call it SAF membrane. The problem is that that decreases your rough opening by the dimension of your door trim. So if the door trim is half an inch, you've just lost half an inch on your rough opening. So to do this, you need to know ahead of time and create your rough openings half an inch taller than you would have created them had you not been using this door trim. Yeah. Okay, now then, is everybody happy? You've got your slope sill if that's what you want. I'm gonna tell you, you don't have to have it, but if you want it, that's how to do it. We're gonna do a B method of window installation because We've tested all methods many times, and in water testing, your B method performs better. And I'm not going to go into why right now, it just does. So we're going to put our flashing on first, at the sides. 
We like SAF uh, membranes. If you really want to use a um, nail on flashing, you could. I don't have a problem with that. But normally, if somebody's going to spend the money on Tyvek house wrap, they don't mind spending the money on a SAF peel and stick membrane. We're using FortiFlash by FortiFiber. It's a great product. This is a 25 mil product. DuPont makes a tremendous product called Straight Flash. Uh, we encourage you to take a look at that. It's a butyl based compound. Whatever you choose to use as an SAF membrane, we'd encourage you to put it on before the window goes in on the sides. It has to go in before the window at the bottom. There's an alternative at the sides that has to do with whether you're using an A method or a B method. We prefer the B method. And again, I'm going to give you this in a final exam. Why do we prefer the B method? Because it tests better. In our testing, which we've done many, many times, a B method tests better than an A method. We will show you in future videos how to do an A method. If your architect has spec specified an A, I'll show you how to do an A. And it can be just fine. However, given your druthers, given your preferences, uh, I'd go for B. If you have a J roller, use a J roller. J roller is always a good idea. As you can see, we we must not have one. All right, here's our rough opening immediately before the window gets installed. Notice that the Tyvek house wrap WRB is temporarily held up at the top. We've got side flashing on, which is an SAF product, and we've got a pan system in. We've also got a bib, also known as an apron at the bottom, and this is so that later another WRB can be tucked up underneath it. Now it's time to install the window. We're using an aluminum window with a nail fin. This is a very common type of window. This, however, is made by Traco. This is an exceptionally high-end aluminum window. We've tested this window and it is a beast. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do though is install this beast of a window correctly. The window component will pass very high-end water tests. What we need to do is install it using a method that will pass at least as high as the window will, and ideally even a lot higher than that. When a window is installed correctly, we can't make it leak. And what we're going to do is we're going to install this window correctly um, using methods and materials that are very simple and very easy to, to get. You're not going to see any material that you can't find at your local white cap or Orco or whoever your local professional material supplier is, lumberyard, stock building supply, whatever. This is the bottom of our window. Now, since we are using a pan system, which many of the uh, you know technocrat geeks out there would call a drainage system, and I resemble one of those guys, what we're going to do is we're going to have an intermittent bead of sealant at the bottom. So we're going to measure three inches from each corner, and this is not going to receive sealant. This is going to be our path of least resistance for water to escape. What we're doing right now is we're creating a path of least resistance for water to escape. Now notice how Percy's holding his gun. <clears throat> You've heard me say this on other videos, but it's important. His gun's at about a 45 degree angle. This creates a nice plump bead of sealant. See that? That is a perfect bead of sealant and it is positioned towards the outboard edge of the nail fin. Now see how nice that looks? That's because Percy's a professional and he's been doing this since he was about three years old. Right, Percy? Yeah, all right. 